and welcome to episode one of uh, Community Questions. First of all, thank you so much for all the questions. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And um, for those questions I got, which, which I don't answer in this video or do, I will store them for a later Community Questions episode. So there's that. All right. I have never done a thing like this before. I have never done kind of a screen recording slash talking to a camera thing. And I don't think I'm very good at it. So if you see any weird cuts or anything like that, it's probably because I'm not too good at talking in full sentences without stopping and thinking for a long, long time. Now that's out of the way. Let's get back and jump into the screen. Okay, unlike Harry Potter, I am not a wizard that is in Lightroom and Photoshop, that is. I know enough to get by, but I'm not an expert in any way. But if I run into a problem, I do like everybody else does. I go on YouTube and I type, and then I find, oh, I hit a button of sorts. <laughs> what what happened? Here we go. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> so that's my level of skill right there. Okay, so while out on location I decided to do an HDR. As you can see there are a huge difference in the uh, brighter areas and the darker areas. And because of this line here in the mountain it's uh, it's not an ideal filter location, to put it like that. So, in my opinion, HDR is the only way to go to capture the full scene here. So, I did one really underexposed, as you see here, preserving the uh, preserving the brighter areas, and I did one kind of in the, in between, uh, working on this section right here, getting all the details. And I did one more where I overexposed or burned out this section right here and maintaining this foreground. Um, so that was my preparation. The first thing I'm going to do is to find my crop. So let's do that and uh, let's see. Thinking... Five by seven maybe. Something like that. Ah, that looks good. And then I copy the crop settings. Command Z, and just copy everything because I haven't done anything else. And then I paste it to the two remaining clips here. Let's see, paste settings. And then they should be the same crop settings. And then I mark them and I go into uh, photo and photo merge HDR and then we wait. You should have some waiting music. I'll fix that in post. Here we go. And that looks quite okay. Let's just merge it. And now it's done. Let's see here. So this is the HDR. And as you can see, it's nothing much to look at right now. But if I pull it up a bit, let's see something around here maybe. And I pull down the highlights. You see ooh, a lot of things are sort of happening. And we're going to pull up the shadows for a bit. So this is something I like to do. I try to avoid looking at the numbers on the right side here, of the screen here. Because if you stare at the numbers, I find that it's easy to kind of, kind of go for full fives or even full tens. And, and you're not using your eyes as much. So I try to kind of find the place and I'm using the slider and just looking at it and when my eyes says it's okay that's when I stop so that's something I try to do 
And right now, as you can see, the image is looking very flat. Uh, so we're gonna add some contrast. And uh, something about there, I see. And uh, take the white up a bit. No. White a bit down. And uh, let's see the blacks. Something like this, maybe a bit more up there. All right, I'm kind of liking this pretty much. I, w I, li I'm, I like that it's kind of dark hair, it gives it a natural vignette of sorts. All right, so it looks kind of all right, I guess. I'm gonna increase the vibrance a bit. Let's see, that's way too much to pull back and something around there 31 mm, it's a bit greenish so I'm gonna decrease the green in the image like that maybe try to pull out some of uh, the uh, yellow in it ah. Not much to go on. Get some more green hair. <laughs> Around there, I think. Alright. So, this looks quite alright. Some, sometimes I, I like to experiment with these sliders right here, the split toning sliders. So what I usually do is that I just bump up the saturation to around midpoint and I just slide the slider over and I see if something enhances the image. Normally it doesn't, but sometimes it does. So right here, there, I think we're onto something. But it's way too much, so I'm gonna pull it way back, pull it all the way down, and I'm gonna slowly just look at the image and say, around there. So we ended up on a nine. Same things with shadows. I pull it up in around midway, and then I slide it along, just looking and see where we're hitting a spot I like and around there I think to kind of get it more moody and then I'm sliding that one all the way down again and just adding a touch ha! <laughs> two we ended up not, not much <laughs> alright as for sharpening Probably, let's see, to 40. Mm. Probably pull it down to 33. All right, this is starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna increase the vignettes, just to kind of make it darker in the edges. And I really enjoy this part right here and this wall right here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, add a brush tool, and I'm gonna paint this section like that, and here, and here. And then I'm gonna add a bit of clarity. So you can see right here, you can mark it and remove it. You see it helps a bit in highlighting these, these areas right here. Just a touch. Touch of everything is always good. So this is me, almost done in Lightroom. I see there's some something here. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Probably light from above making this kind of more diffuse or what you call it. Maybe I'll try to make it a bit darker at the top.
Sí. Oh, that helped a bit. All right. So it looked pretty good. Then what I usually do is that I'm, I'm opening it in Photoshop. There we go. And then I use Command L to bring up this levels. Then I pull back the highlights while holding the shift, uh, the option button in. And that will see me when it starts to clip, so around here. And if I do Command C now, you can see before and after, you see we've lifted the image just a bit. Same thing at the bottom. Option in, and you pull that one in, and you see start clipping pretty early. So I'll probably leave it at zero, like that. And then I look for things that annoy me. Usually that's lots, but this time, this bit right here, it's not a big thing. But if I was a nitpicky person and I wanted to remove this, which I sometimes remove stuff uh, that would just distract, I use this patch tool and I just circle around it and I swap and that's that. That was a horrible swap, sorry. Go backwards. One more time. And just paint around it. Like that. And like that. There you go, non wiser. So there you go. Command S, save it, and we're back in Lightroom. And then I mark the, uh, the finished Photoshop version with five stars. And I look at it for 10 hours straight. It's not bad. I like this image. I like that location. I found it, me and uh, Chasti, we were out walking by the sea and I saw this ravine and I just went down there and I s looked and I saw this is a brilliant spot for photography. And I tried to time it because the sun is around here. I thought it would be the day, but in a few days, maybe weeks, it will move over here. So hopefully I'm around and the weather willing, I can get the same image but with the sunset right here. That would be something. So I'm happy with this. Okay, so that was Community Questions Episode 1. If you would like to see anything else, this is your chance. Just ask me questions in the comment section and I will store it for later community questions episodes. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. Most things I've learned, I've learned from watching others do what I'm doing right now, and I pick up bits and bobs around, so maybe you learned something as well. One thing I have learned, though, is the worst images are the ones I'm spending most time with. It uh, turns into a rescue operation, like, uh, and then you stop and look at it. So this image ain't particularly good. Why am I spending an hour on it? The good images usually is about and they're done. So there's that. Thanks again for watching. And uh, if you like what I do here, consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, that helps a lot with exposure and uh, all the comments help as well. So keep them coming. I greatly appreciate it. Tusen hjertelig takk. Take care of each other and We'll speak soon. Bye-bye.